Welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today, we're going to talk about forced landing. A forced landing is an emergency landing. Due to the fact that for most of the training aircraft only has one engine, when that engine malfunctions, applying this technique would increase the probability of a successful landing. Engine malfunction can be caused by a number of reasons. One of the common reasons is fuel related. If the fuel quantity is insufficient, or the fuel type is incorrect, or even contaminated by other substances such as water, the engine may run rough or even malfunction to a point it will completely stop. On the other hand, the internal component failure within the engine can sometimes cause engine malfunction. As the inside of the engine is a high stress and high heat environment, component may get overstress and deform and potentially damage the engine. This can stop the engine from operating normally. Regarding the external factors of an engine failure, if the engine hits any foreign object such as debris or birds, it can seriously damage the engine to a point where it can't run completely. While it's very uncommon, these are still some of the reasons of why an engine may fail. After an engine failure, there are eight stages to a forced landing. Firstly, pitch for best glide attitude to achieve best glide speed. On the Diamond DA40, the best glide attitude is three to four fingers. The best glide speed varies with the weight of the aircraft. When the aircraft is 1,150 kilos, the best glide speed is 73 knots. When it's 1,200 kilos, the best glide speed is increased to 76 knots. When the best glide speed is maintained, the aircraft will maximize the gliding distance to cover more ground to have more options to land on. Secondly, conduct the initial checks in an attempt to restart the engine. C, F, M, S. Check fire and smoke. Look for any fire and smoke from the engine. Apply rudder to see if there's any smoke trailing behind the aircraft. At the same time, alternate air opens. Fuel pump on. Fuel selector switch tank. Mixture full rich. Master on. Magnetos on both. Starter engaged. And this is the initial checks. Thirdly, if the engine is unable to be restarted, please assess the following criteria to select a most suitable fuel to conduct a forced landing. Wind. Size. Shape. Slope, surface, surrounding, civilization, wind. Try to land into wind as much as possible. Size, the bigger the field, the better chance for a safe landing. Shape, ideally a rectangular runway looking field. Slope, ideally flat or slide uphill. Surface, flat surface would be ideal. If landing on a grass field, Choose a lighter color field as it normally indicates less moisture in soil, which means harder surface. Surrounding. Avoid tall trees and power lines. Civilization. Ideally, land close to the towns, so it would be easier to request for help after the landing. Fourth. Plan the approach for the selected field so the approach will not be too high or too low. When trying to work out the approach to land on the field, Plan to conduct a circuit over it if possible, and plan in reverse from the touchdown point backwards to the current position and altitude of the aircraft. Firstly, to ensure that the aircraft is reaching the field, instead of aiming at the start of the field, we'll aim one third in the field. Reason being is in case that the aircraft is landing short of the aiming point because of unforeseeable headwind, the aircraft still has a chance to land within that one third of the field. Because of that, we call that point the one-third aim point. Before the one-third aim point is the final and then base. When it's 45 degrees to the threshold on base, it's the start of the downwind. On downwind, when I beam the one-third aim point, that's the low key point. At this point, the aircraft has to pass this point at 1,500 feet above ground. Extending downwind until it is 45 degrees with the other end of the field, and then it is the start of the crosswind. On crosswind, when I beam the one-third aim point, this is the high key point. The aircraft is aiming to be here at 2,500 feet above ground. The purpose of the high key and the low key point is to judge if the altitude of the aircraft is within an acceptable range, whether it is too high or too low for that chosen field. 
If the aircraft is currently at 3,500 feet, the aircraft should be able to glide to the high key at 2,500 feet, to the low key at 1,500 feet, and then land. However, if the aircraft is only at 2,000 feet, high key would no longer be an option, and we have to go to low key 1,500 feet straight away, and then land. When the aircraft arrives at this key point and is below the target altitude, if we keep on doing the normal circuit, there will be a higher chance of undershooting and not reaching the field. In this instance, we have to reduce the gliding distance. For example, if the aircraft reaches the high key point at 2,200 feet above ground, which is 300 feet below the target altitude, to reduce the gliding distance, fly directly from high key point to low key point in an attempt to reach low key point at 1,500 feet. During the execution of the planned circuit, we can proceed with the next stage, the troubleshoot checks, in an attempt to find out what is wrong with the engine and try to restart again. The troubleshoot checks consist of F most, cycle the fuel pump, cycle the fuel selector, cycle the mixture and the master, check the magnetosis on both and cycle, verify the oil temperature and pressure is in the green range again, and re-engage the starter. Last but not least, cycle the throttle. To avoid overcooling the engine during the prolonged descent of a practice force landing, every 1,000 feet of descent, apply full throttle for a couple of seconds to keep the engine warm. The next phase of force landing would be communication. We'll be making a mayday call to the air traffic control to request for assistance, and also set the transponder. A standard mayday call consists of mayday, the aircraft type, the call sign, the nature of the emergency, the current location and altitude, the number of people on board, and the planned action. I will now demonstrate. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Diamond, DA-40. Alpha Bravo Charlie, Alpha Bravo Charlie, Alpha Bravo Charlie. Suffered an engine failure at the training area. 3,500 feet, two person on board. We'll be conducting a force landing, and that is how you make a Mayday call. At the same time, set the transponder code to 7700. This code indicates the aircraft is in a distress situation and can help with the search and rescue team to locate the aircraft. After communicating with the air traffic control, we'll conduct a passenger brief to explain the situation to our passenger and to keep them calm. Instruct your passenger to fasten the seatbelt, and if they have any sharp items on them, instruct them to stow the sharp items away in a safe location. Our first demonstrate. Dear passengers, we have suffered an engine failure. We'll be conducting an emergency landing off airport. Please stay calm, fasten your seatbelt, and remove all sharp items out of your pocket and put it somewhere safe. After we have stopped, please vacate the aircraft, and it will meet 100 meters in front of the aircraft. Lastly, conduct the shutdown checks. Bush checks, B-U-S-H. Brakes off, undercarriage is fixed, switches are off, except master. Because if we need to lower the flaps, it requires electricity to do that. Hatches open, harnesses securely fastened. When lowering flaps, only lower flaps when you are 100% sure that you will reach the field even after flaps are lowered. Because flaps will increase the aerodynamic drag dramatically, reducing the gliding distance. In an actual emergency, land on the nominated field the best you can. However, during a practice force landing, we'll be conducting a go around. If the practice force landing is conducted on an unpopulous area, the go around has to be conducted so the aircraft will not be below 500 feet above the ground level at any point of the exercise. However, if the chosen field is populous, the distance from ground will be increased to a thousand feet. In an actual force landing, after the touchdown, apply rudder as required to steer away from any obstacles and apply brakes when able to come to a full stop. After the aircraft has come to a full stop, evacuate and go in front of the aircraft as per the passenger brief. When able, contact the emergency unit to request assistance. During the practice force landing, please bear in mind that we're not actually shutting the engine down. Touching and verbalizing the checklist item would be sufficient for the training purposes. When practicing simulating engine failure, your instructor would first say simulating engine failure, then pull the throttle lever to the idle position. Simulating engine failure. The initial action is to maintain glide speed. Based on the weight, 1150 kilos. Glide speed is 73 knots. Attitude is about 3 to 4 fingers. The next step is CFMS. Try to restart the engine. Check for fire in the smoke. No fire, no smoke. Switch fuel tank.
skill pass on, max strength master max on both, RPM full fine, start it engaged, maintain the glide speed of 73 knots, and start to look for field. If we position the aircraft so the right wing tip is pointing into the wind, the wind right now is coming from the right, so if we find any field to our left, we can join crosswind or high key and land pretty much straight away. I found a decent field, so I will start to try to track towards the high key point. The field that we're tracking towards is in front of that two points. I'm planning to track directly to high key and conduct a left hand circuit to land on the field. High key is on the top of the house and the low key are those tree lines. We'll be flying beyond low key, descend to about a thousand feet and turn around and conduct a forced landing. During the practice forced landing, for every 1000 feet of descent, we'll warm the engine up by applying full power momentarily. Keep maintaining glide speed. Now we can move on to the secondary checks. Alternate air open, cycle fuel tank, cycle fuel pump, and extra cycle, max cycle, oil T's and P's are in the green, switches, starters, throttle cycle. If this doesn't solve the problem, then we have to stick to the plane. So we have just passed the high key point but we are 300 feet too low. So let's not fly the entire crosswind leg, but track directly to the low key point right away. If we have time now, we'll conduct the Mayday call. We are on 135.7, which is Melbourne Center. We'll say Mayday, 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 Melbourne Center, Diamond, Mike November, November, Mike November, November, Mike November, November. Suffered an engine failure in the Moorabbin training area, five miles east of Cranbourne race course. Two personnel on board will contact after landing. We are doing this to notify the centre that we have an engine failure. We will also do a passenger brief. Dear passenger, we have an engine failure. Please fasten your seatbelt, brace yourself and evacuate the aircraft after we have stopped. And we will meet 100 metres in front of the aircraft. After this, proceed with the procedure of the forced landing. We are now approaching the tree lines, which is the low key point. We are slightly below 1500 feet, but not as much as before, so we are actually catching up on altitude. We will warm the engine up again after 1000 feet of descent. When the 113 point appears behind the trailing edge and is roughly 45 degrees behind, start to turn towards base. The last check is the shutdown checks, which is the bush check. Brakes off, undercarriage fixed, switches off except master, fold of flaps if we need to, hatches open, harness is secured. We're a bit high on profile, so let's lower one stage of flaps. Speed check flap down. It still feels a bit high, so we'll lower the last stage of flap. Speed check flap down. If there's a real engine failure, we can proceed to land right in front of us. But in this exercise, we'll go around at a thousand feet. So full power, raise the nose, dash on horizon. Positive rate, flaps up stage by stage. Positive rate, flaps up. And this is a practice forced landing demonstration. If the engine failure occurs at 2500 feet, we can't go to the high key point. So the only option is to go to the low key. There's a field ahead of us which we can use if needed. So let's simulate we have an engine failure. Simulating engine failure, power idle. First of all, glide speed. Based on the current weight, it's 73 knots. Don't forget to trim for three fingers at issue. Engine restart CFMS. And CFMS is not working, so we'll proceed to the next step, which is the field selection. We did look for a field, so we, which is right there, and the wind is coming from the right. So we can track directly to the low key, do a U-turn, and track towards the right and land. 
the next step is to troubleshoot checks. F most. A F cycle fuel pump. M O oil TCPs, switches, throttle cycle, and if it doesn't work, conduct a mayday call. Mayday, 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 Melbourne Centre, Diamond, Mike, November, November, Mike, November, November, Mike, November, November. Five mile east of Cranbourne race course, suffered an engine failure, two PLB will contact after landing. After that, conduct a pack spray. The passenger will have an engine failure, will be landing at the paddock right below us. Please slide through the seat belt and brace yourself. I'll meet you at 100 feet in front of the aircraft after we have evacuated. We've got a traffic on our left, so traffic sighted. This is roughly the low key point. We're at 1600 feet, which means our profile is on point. After descending for 1000 feet, we have to warm the engine up. So we've just passed Loki. We'll keep flying like we're on late downwind in a normal circuit. Lastly, conduct the shutdown checks. Brakes off, undercarriage fixed, switches are off except master because we'll need it for flaps. Hatches harnesses secured. When a one turning point appears behind a trailing edge and is roughly 45 degrees behind us, start to turn towards base. If we're high, lower one stage of flaps and speed check flap down. And we'll keep turning towards final. After ensuring the outcome of the practice force landing, we can initiate a go around from here. Go around full power, raise the nose, touch on horizon, apply enough right rudder as needed to balance, positive rate, based on the VSI, flaps up one stage, positive rate, flaps up last stage. And this is a practice force landing from 2500 feet. It is now the time for the threat and error management for this practice force landing lesson. During the glide, the engine would be cooling down rapidly as the engine would be idling for a prolonged period of time. Because of that, the engine may get overcooled and possibly malfunction. To manage the engine temperature, apply full power for every 1000 feet of descent to retain an appropriate temperature within the engine. Secondly, it is very important to know that this is just a simulation. Please do not actually shut the engine down during the shutdown checks. Like I've mentioned before, verbalizing and touching the respective checklist item is sufficient for the purpose of training. Last but not least, forgetting checklist items is one of the common mistakes that students make. If checklists are not completed, the chances of a successful engine restart will be reduced. Using a flight simulator or even just a chair it's a great way to familiarize yourself with the procedures and the checklist. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to Learn With Fly YouTube channel for more great content. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.